Now, no. bringing it home to the family. Let's say you're a parent and you know your eight-year-old comes to you and wants to start wearing dresses. Maybe he wants to change his name to her. Or let's say you've got a, a 10-year-old who says, you know, I heard from my teacher that I can get puberty blockers because I think that I more identify as this gender than that gender. Or you're 16 year old shows up and said okay i've been researching this a bit on tumblr and elsewhere and i want to begin receiving cross-sex hormone treatments and therapy uh or you've got you know kid is 17 just getting ready to finish off high school and say mom i've really been struggling with this for years i haven't told you um but i want to have a top surgery or i want to have some type of gender reaffirmation you know change surgery um and you're the mom and you're the dad how do you respond to this? Obviously in love and in truth, but for a lot of parents, like they don't know what to do. I remember meeting a dad <laughs> once with his son and the, the father said, well, you talk to my boy. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, sure, sure be happy. And he brought the boy over. We talked together. And, and after the conversation, the, the boy wanted a transition. And, you know, the boy moved on and the, the father came and said, see, you know what? He said, I, I just want to let the kid go through with it and have the sex operation. So that way, when he's a little older and he regrets it, well, then that can be his punishment. And I'm like, oh, you know, in my heart just broke because I thought like, well, what if your son went to a doctor and said, I want to get my eye taken out. I, I want to have my hand. I want to have my hand removed. I want to have my ear yeah. sealed up permanently. Like, would you ever be OK with that as a father? But because we're in this immersed in this hypersexualized culture, it's like every other body part is off limits except for the reproductive yeah. ones. And those we can yeah. just mold and manipulate at wish. So if you're the parent, how do you respond to this in a way that's not gonna send that kid running back to his public school teacher and like crying wolf, and like see my parents hate me and they won't let me transition mm -hmm. and I should be taken away from them and be given to parents who truly love me and are gonna be willing to let me be who I truly am. What mm -hmm. do you do with that volatile situation? Because I know in some countries they're willing to like literally take you away from your parents if they don't yeah. run along hook, line, and sinker with the gender theory movement. Yeah, it is it is frightening and it is scary for parents. I had a mother that reached out to me maybe six months ago and was asking me a similar situation like what you just described. Please talk to my son, you know, um, and, you know, he's actually 17. He's wanting to, you know, transition, all these sort of things, and I don't know what to do about it. Um, and, you know, she was wanting to help and she took him to, a, you know, this clinic um, and went there and she thought she was going to see this guy who was going to help, you know, her son figure out his situation and deal with whatever was going on interiorly to be able to, yeah, to to resolve the, the issue, to try and address his difficulty with his identity. And the kid comes out with information from the counselor who, um, informed them that there's groups that will pay for your hormones and there's groups that will pay for surgeries and there's all these advocacy and essentially gave him all the tools to to walk out and without his mother's approval against her wishes to you know to follow through with transitioning hormonally surgically etc um so i get this call she comes and she says that for two and a half, three weeks uh, after this meeting, she went back home in the clinic, which like this is against like HIPAA. It's against a lot of it. Called her and harassed her every other day saying, you must bring him back. We're going to make sure that he like this abuse of like a parent's proper role in relationship to their children that's happening is really it's wrong. It's evil. It's unjust. Um, so I would say one thing is don't go walking into a gender clinic with your child, do some research to find out where you can get the kind of help that's actually going to be help and not just something that's going to enable someone to continue to walk down this path that, as you said, later, the regret and the irreversibility of that regret, because even if you start hormones and you do it for a temporary period of time, you know, somebody said, well, you can always, you know, stop taking the puberty blockers at any point. It was like, you can never get those years back for your body that you were on those hormones or on those blockers. What it does to you is not something that you can somehow all of a sudden, like just bam, back to normal. It doesn't work that way. So, so I would say move slowly is one thing. Look for the right kind of help. 
is another to be able to find counselors, find people who are willing to, to minister and walk with folks who are in that situation and get them real help. Um, and then, you know, it's like, stay in relationship no matter what. I remember I was at this conference, a mother of a, a boy who has um, same-sex attraction, who got married as a young man, you know, civil marriage uh, to his partner. And his mom sharing the story said, you know, I told him we're not, be, we're not gonna be able to go to that, you know, that ceremony. And, and he's like, fine, then I don't want you in my life. Um, and, and she was like, I, I still love you. And she kept writing letters to him. He didn't respond called him on his birthday and over a number of like three to four years of just continuing to do what she could to keep the relationship of life, he opened up again and, and called back and said, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to be traveling for business and I'm in the area. Could we meet up? Um, and, and something she said struck me. She said that relationship is the only context for conversion. Conversion can't happen outside of a relationship. Healing doesn't happen outside of a relationship. So staying in that relationship is essential. Um, listening, I mean, what I was talking about before, if it's a young child, see, they're different. If you're a little child, listen first. Where'd you hear this from? Who, wh when did you first think about this? Where is this coming from? Listen to their, listen to their story and try and find out. Now, this isn't always the case, but there are times and more and more in this day and age where it's, you know, somebody going and, you know, showing up a class or somewhere else and someone putting this idea in them. Uh, another story of kind of where things are out, the ideology. Psychologist who is touting this great story of a, a young child coming in and this child who's a little bit of a tomboy, this girl, Mom's just wanting to have a, have her talk through, you know, just kind of not getting along with the girls as much at school, et cetera. And, and this counselor listens to this child and then, you know, asks the child, you know, well, do you think maybe you're, you know, the situation is actually that you're a boy, you know, who's just got the wrong body? Like to like an eight-year-old, right? You're like, okay, well, and the response is, no, I'm a girl. And then the counselor says, well, let me tell you a little, let me ask you something else. You know, there's uh, Pop-Tarts, strawberry and blueberry. They come, you know, in different wrappers, you know. It's like, what would happen if you got a blueberry Pop-Tart and a strawberry wrapper and you opened it up and it was blueberry inside, but it was a strawberry wrapper? Would you say that that's a blueberry or a strawberry Pop-Tart? And she gets this girl to eventually change and say, oh, maybe I am a boy in a girl's body. And then turns to her mom, you know, and says, mom, I'm a boy. And it's like, and this, the, the counselor is like rejoicing and saying, we're giving them the language to be able to express, you know, what they're going through. And it's like, no, there's so... So to be aware that that's out there for parents is really important to also know that, you know, I mean, you mentioned it before, but to say it again for children who are pre puberty, pre pubescent, 80 to 90, 92 percent of those children passing through puberty naturally will arrive at a recognition of their their own sexual identity as it corresponds to their body. So so ride the wave. It might be challenging, but, you know. All of us, man, growing up's tough. Yeah. And there's moments of confusion for everybody. And that goes for, you know, sexual attraction, identity. So listen to them, walk with them. Don't just smash them. The worst thing you can do is say, you know, well, you're just a boy, you know, or you, like a, a really strong authoritarian rigid response is the worst thing you could do. I know that from the stories that I've heard firsthand, that that's one of the like key, like, flags I've seen in a number of people's stories. They're struggling a little bit. They go to a parent and they get a really strong, rigid response. And guess what happens? They fly the other direction. Um, so that's not the way forward. So listening to them, loving them, staying in relationship, finding the right help and being aware that there are people out there 
who are looking to make your child a part of their ideological project and don't let them. Um, yeah. Reminds me of like people that I've spoken to that have wondered, okay, how do I tell my parents that I've been addicted to porn? Or how do I tell my you know, parents I lost my virginity or whatever? And, and, and they're scared to death. I mean, they want to have this authentic relationship, but in the same respect, they're scared to death that once this conversation happens, <laughs> it's just going to blow sky high. And one yeah. of the things I try to tell the parents is like, as this information is being disclosed to you, the temptation might be to go with your emotions and just go bonkers on the kid or whatever. But like you yeah. can't allow your face to betray what's going on interiorly, meaning, OK, inside, feel whatever you want. But make sure at the end of that conversation, your kid feels love. My mom didn't freak out on me. My mom didn't disown me. They didn't kick me to the curb, <laughs> whether it's pornography, premarital sex, gender, homosexuality, whatever the case may be. Just try to keep it cool. Like if your eight year old is a mom, I found porn on the Internet. It's like, wow, you looked at what? I mean, that type of volcanic reaction can send that kid into isolation and shame. It's like, heck, that's the last yeah. time I share that kind of information with that person. Yeah. And so just try to keep your cool, even if inside you're you're just bewildered and frustrated and angry at the culture. You know, hey, try to keep your cool and make the kid feel that when he walked away, it's like my mom still loves me. My dad still loves me, that they know that, that this is going to be a long game. It's not going to be one in one conversation. But I think parents, too, can start early and often of affirming the gender of their kids, that your body is not just wrapping on a candy. You know, the body mm -hmm. reveals who you are. And, you know, you can pray with the kids at night. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for making Joseph a boy. You know, help him to grow strong, to be a man like daddy. And we help. Thank you for making Angelica a girl. Mm -hmm. And one day she'll be like, mommy. And so that we're affirming them in their gender because they're going to grow up yeah. with all kinds of different interests that aren't going to fit into every little cultural gender stereotype yeah. box. I mean, last week. Yeah. Um, I was working in my office and one of my boys runs to the office like, dad, rattlesnake in the backyard. I'm like, okay, let, let's go get him, guys. So all the kids are going bonkers. So there's two dogs outside. We've got a gigantic African mastiff <laughs> dog who the kids named Megalodog yep. after the Megalodon movie. So we've got Megalodog and then we've got Meatball, who's our English bulldog puppy. And they're going bonkers and the kids are trying to drag him inside. We finally get the dogs. Mm. And I'm like, okay, guys. We got this. Here's how we're going to take care of this. My boy's like, can I get my gun? I'm like, okay, go ahead. Get your gun. I got the shovel. And so the rattlesnake's coiled up underneath the slide in the backyard. And they're like, you know, what do we do? What do we? I'm like, okay, now, Colby, you get down like a sniper, and you're going to take some shots at it. And then it's going to slither out the back of the slide. I'm going to be on top of the swing set, and then I'll drop the shovel, cut its head off, and, and then, you know, then they're going to be done with this. <laughs> and so, so he's like, all right, you know, and he's, you know, shooting that thing, and the kids are cheering, and, you know, I get the, the head cut off. And then, uh, you know, so we've got it dead now. And so my daughter, of all people, is like, let's dissect it. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, let's dissect it. I'm like, all right, go for it. So, so we bring the rattlesnake inside. Crystalline is obviously not <laughs> enjoying this as much as we are, you know. But I, I show her how to clean the rattlesnake, and and she didn't even want gloves. I mean, she's like thirteen year old girl, and she's gutting this rattlesnake on the kitchen table on some little plastic tray, and everybody's gathered around it, you know. And then they want to put the head in a ziplock and the rattler in a ziplock and all this. And then after a day of it, you know, my wife's like, okay, enough. You know, we're throwing away all the body parts. And then like, just, just like yesterday, my wife's in the kitchen. She's like, what is that awful smell? I've smelled it for like a week now. Turns out one of the kids took like the gelatinous corpse of this rattlesnake and stuffed it into the back of a kitchen cabinet because, and mom's like, who did this? Which one of you did this? And it's my eight year old daughter. And she's like, I wanted to keep it because you were throwing away all the other parts. And so I just kind of yeah. chucked it in the back of the cabinet. But like my 13 year old daughter dissecting it barehanded Eight-year-old yeah. daughter keeping body parts in a Ziploc bag. Meanwhile, my you know fourteen-year-old boy is like, I don't want to even touch that thing. I just want to shoot it. And so the yeah. beauty of God's plan for human sexuality is male and female. It's not about being put into a box. You know, mm -hmm. these are fully masculine, fully feminine responses in their own beauty. And so, you know, so as parents, again, just kind of take a deep breath. It's going to be a long journey here. We don't need to get the first conversation perfect, but just make them feel loved.